The next conic section we're going to take a look at is what's called an ellipse. And we're going to start this off with the same kind of locus of points definition we used with the circle on the parabola. An ellipse is the locus of points or the sum of the distances from each of two fixed points called foci or focuses. That's my F1 and F2 is a constant. So if I, if I add up these two distances to any point out on the ellipse, and I pick any other point, calculate this, this same sum, it's got to come out the same right, for every point on the shape. Now, the point halfway between the foci is called the center. That's this point here. Uh, the line passing through those two focal points is called the major axis. And the line perpendicular to the major axis through the center is called the minor axis. Okay, so that's all we're going to need to come up with our analytic geometry equation. Now, before we do that, there, there are two facts, two, two little equations that we need to have in, in, our, in our toolbox, right? So I've got the basic layout here. I've got our ellipse, and I've put the center at the origin, just like we did with the parabola, right? We put its vertex at the origin. That's going to make the calculation simple, and, and we'll see what we need to do to move it away from there uh, right at the very end of the lecture. That's going to be the same kind of basic, just simple translation that we had with a parabola. So I, I've defined some numbers here. I've defined C to be the distance between the center and one of the focal points. Remember, the center is in between the two. Right? It's in the exact center, so the other side is going to be C as well. I've defined A to be this distance along the major axis from the center out to the edge of the ellipse. Right? This actually has a name. It's called a semi-major axis. And I've done the same thing up on the top. right? I've defined the distance from the center up along the minor axis to the edge of the ellipse to be B. Right? And that's going to be uh, what, we, what we'll call the semi-minor axis. OK, so here's here's two facts that we, we need to have before we go any further. Right? If we look at this point here, right? That point out there. So what I'm going to do is I want to calculate a value for this this common distance, right? That distance that the the distance from any point on the circle out to the two focal points has to add up to. So to get from this focal point from the left-hand one, I have to go this far. And then to get from that point back to the other focal point, I have to come back that distance. All right, so this distance here is C, right? This one is C. Let's, uh, I need a variable here that I haven't used yet. Let's call both of these F. Okay, so what, what is D then? Well, D is C plus C plus that distance F here plus that distance F again down here. Right, so this is C plus F plus C plus F. The reason I wrote it this way, look at C plus F. That's this distance down here. That's just A. Right, so this distance is A plus A, which is 2A. And so, <coughs> excuse me. So that distance D, that is actually just the length of the section of the semi of the major axis that is inside the ellipse. Okay, so that's the first point we need. All right now, the second point, let me I'm gonna clear clean this up a little bit so I'm not writing over myself. Let's take a look at a different point. Let's clear that stuff out, right? And I'm going to look at this point up here, right? If I draw those two distances, notice I've got an isosceles triangle here, right? Those distances are the same. Most important, this is a right triangle. Okay, so let, let's say we call these, these distances each x, All right? Well, x plus x has to equal that constant distance d. All right, well, that means that 2x equals 2a. 
So x is equal to a. So the distance from a focal point up to that outer point on the minor axis, this is a. This distance here is b. So the Pythagorean theorem tells us that b squared plus c squared equals a squared. All right, or I'm going to rewrite this, right? I'm going to rewrite this c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Right? And, I, and I wrote it that way for a reason. You'll see when, when we get to the final equation here. The final equation has a and b in it. So we're going to get that semi-major axis and semi-minor axis. We're going to get those lengths directly from the equation. If you want to know where the focal points are, if you want to know the value of this parameter c down here, you're going to need that equation to do it. All right, so those are my two equations, right? Let me write the d in here. d is equal to... 2a. So it's this one and this one. Hold on to both of those because we're going to need them to derive our formula. So now we're ready to come up with our equation. I mean, I've, I've got our, our two, those two basic facts down here uh, on the bottom of the slide. And what I'm going to do is I, I've got my ellipse. I've got the a, b, and c filled in. I'm going to put this point down here, some random point on the ellipse, call it x, comma, y. Now, the location of the focal points are c comma zero and negative c comma zero. So using those, those variables, I can find this length and this length. And if I add them up, that has to equal that constant length that we found. So the first distance is going to be the square root of x minus minus c squared plus y minus zero, that's y squared, plus the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared again, that's for the right-hand focal point. This equals d, but d, remember, is just 2a. Okay, technically, that's our equation, right? But we, we can make it a whole lot, that's a mess, right? We can simplify this, make it a whole lot nicer. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, let, let's simplify that double negative there. This is the square root of x plus c squared plus y squared. And I'm going to take this square root and I'm going to move it over to the other side. So this is 2a minus the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared. Now, if you remember back in your in algebra class, maybe a uh, pre-cal class, you learn a method for solving equations with radicals in them. And we, we really aren't trying to solve this. We're trying to simplify it, but we're going to use the same method. Now that I've got that left-hand square root by itself, I'm going to square both sides. All right, so the square is going to go away, and this is just x plus c squared plus y squared equals 4a squared minus 4a times this square root and I'm a little short on space here right so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna write what's in there plus x minus c squared plus y squared all right my next step I'm gonna multiply out those two squares so this is x squared plus 2xc plus c squared plus y squared equals 4a squared minus 4a times that square root plus x squared minus 2xc plus c squared plus y squared. Now I can get, I, there's a whole lot of stuff I can, I can cancel here. I've got an x squared on both sides. I've got a y squared on both sides. Uh, and I've got a c squared on both sides. So what, what's left? Well, this is just 2xc equals 4a squared minus 4a times this square root minus 2xc. Excellent. Now, remember what we did, uh, when what you did when you were learning to solve these equations. Now I'm going to move everything over to one side except for that square root, square both sides again. And so this will be 4xc minus 4a squared equals minus 4a times this square root, and I've got some space now, so I'm going to write it back in. 
x minus c squared plus <coughs> excuse me plus y squared. All right, so let's simplify some more. Let's divide both sides by four before we go any further. x c minus a squared equals negative a times this square root. And now we'll do it again. We'll square both sides. So the right side becomes x squared c squared minus 2xc a squared plus a squared, excuse me, plus a to the fourth equals a squared times, and I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out, x squared minus 2xc plus c squared plus y squared. All right, let's distribute the a squared. Uh, I'm going to start this a little further to the left. x squared c squared minus 2xc a squared plus a to the fourth equals a squared x squared minus 2xc a squared plus a squared c squared plus a squared y squared. Some more canceling is going to happen. I can cancel these 2xc a squared. And now I'm, I'm going to move the x, the, I've got the x squared on the left. I'm going to move the y squared over to the left and everything else over to the right. So this turns into x squared c squared minus, what happens, a squared y squared equals a what's left a squared c squared minus oops sorry got to got to move the x term over Let, let's put the x term together so this is x squared c squared minus x squared a squared minus a squared y squared equals a squared c squared minus a to the fourth okay Pull out uh, the x squared here. This is x squared, c squared minus a squared, minus a squared y squared equals a squared. I'm going to factor this as well. I'm going to make this a squared times c squared minus a squared. Okay, look at this equation now. c squared minus a squared. If you move the a squared over, that's negative b squared. So my equation is, if I, if I substitute that on both sides, negative b squared x squared minus a squared y squared equals negative a squared b squared. Now we're, on, now, now, we're, now we're pretty much there. Divide both sides by negative a squared b squared. The equation becomes x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. A whole lot simpler than this thing we started off with up here, right? So, and that's it, right? That's our, that's our equation um, for an ellipse. So I've summarized everything we did here, right? And uh, I cleaned it up, right? So you've got a clean version of these equations. And you notice what, what, what I did. Instead of x squared and y squared, I have x minus h squared and y minus k squared. Those are the translations I talked about, right? If you want the center to be someplace other than the origin, all you have to do is translate h units in the x direction, k units in the y direction, right? So the, these are um, our general equations for an ellipse. So you notice that there are two of them, right? If the, if the major axis is parallel to the x-axis, right? It's horizontal. Then you use this equation, where the a parameter is under the x part. If the major axis is parallel to the y-axis, it's vertical, then it's the other way around. Then the major axis, since the major axis is in the y direction, it goes under the y variable. Right? And in both cases, we can use this equation that we came up with earlier uh, to find the location of the center. So in other words, a lot of process, a lot to process there. 
a lot of variables, right? A lot of things going on. In the next lecture, we're going to look at some specific examples. We're going to start with the equation of ellipse, and we're going to see how we can get all of this information from it. The, the length of the major and minor axes, the location of the focal point in the center, of the, of the focal points and the center, uh, and how to sketch a quick graph of the, of the ellipse.